Good morning and welcome back to Area 31. Today we're going to be looking at the location for the Kim family tragedy that took place just about 30 or so miles north of my home. So we are looking at Google Earth. The Kim family lived in San Francisco, consisted of James Kim and his wife Katie Kim and they had two little daughters I think four and seven months and on for Thanksgiving of 2006 they had traveled from San Francisco to Seattle Washington to spend Thanksgiving up there with friends and family and then afterwards they came back down on I believe the uh, 25th and stayed in Portland and then continued on down Interstate 5 and they were on their way back down to San Francisco and they had made a decision to spend the night over here on the coast in Gold Beach, Oregon, a place I've been to many times so let's zoom down here here we got I Interstate 5 their original plan was to take off at 42. 42 should be right here in Roseburg. And it's not really showing up very well, but Highway 42 will take you all the way over to Coos Bay, a place I've been to a lot. I guess it's down here, yeah. And um, they were gonna go over here to Coos Bay and then continue down 101 to Gold Beach. But they missed their turn off and they got down in here somewhere and realized it. So they looked on the map and realized there's another road they could take. And we got to get all the way down here to Merlin. They turned off here in Merlin and they wanted to get onto Bear Camp Road, apparently. But I think they would have been better off on Galise Creek Road or Galise Road. I have been on that many times, uh, or one time. I drove my 72 Chevelle over there and it will take you along the Rogue River down here to Agnes and into Gold Beach. So I don't know if they were planning to do that, but what they did was they got off here at Merlin and got on to the road that takes you out to Glace. This is the Rogue River here. And they went out here and apparently they turned off here because they wanted to get on Bear Creek Road. And that was a mistake. But an even bigger mistake was that this was November and it is winter around here and these roads are not meant for being on them during the winter. They get a lot of snow and a lot of mistakes were made by them apparently. So, well, I know they were, but they got off here at Galise Creek Road. Here's a screenshot of it, what it looks like in real life. And they traveled this way, they traveled. Well, it's hard to, to track it down, but it they all connect up and We'll get up here to where it says wrong road. I've got this marked. And you can see it says Bear Creek Road, Bear Camp Road, pardon me. I might have said Bear Creek earlier. It's Bear Camp Road. And that would be it going this way and it would eventually take you into Agnes and all the rest. But they made a bad mistake right here. And we'll take a screenshot of this intersection right here. And instead of continuing on this way on this main road they turned left or they turned right and they started following this road and um, this is where they made their really their final mistake and they continued following this for like 15 miles and it was snowing up here the weather was bad it was it was, you know, late at night. It was just a real bad situation that they got themselves into. And they followed this around and so forth and so on. And then it kept going and they ended up the car. They drove for 15 miles. 
and they finally got to this location. It was about one o'clock in the morning, and uh, I we cannot go down there and take a look at street view on this road. It's not allowed for this old road out here. But anyway, it was pretty much going to dead end, I think. Or well, maybe not. I don't know. But they were way off of what they where they needed to be go. But they should not have been anywhere near up in this area anyway. So I've actually hiked this river. This is a road river. And uh, I've actually hiked that from uh, Whiskey Creek, actually Graves Creek, Rainy Falls. I've taken that hike and it's very, very beautiful. But this is where the car was stranded at. Initially, they were not stuck. They just decided to spend the night there in the car. There's an intersection down there where they just parked right in the middle of the intersection. We're hoping what somebody would come along, but they had gasoline, they had some food and water and all the rest, and they were in a car. So uh, they spent the night in the car, but during the night, it started snowing. And when they got up the next day, there was enough snow that they could not get the car to move. Uh, apparently it was an all-wheel drive, but they decided that they were not going to be able to drive back. And so they stayed in the car and several days went by and uh, the snow just got worse and worse. They started running low on food, of course, and gasoline for the car. And once they were out of gasoline, uh, James took the spare tire out of the trunk and set it on fire so they could have a warming fire outside. And eventually he would take all the, the wheels and tires off the car and burn them up trying to, uh, you know, trying to put a big plume of smoke up for somebody to see. But it was all in vain because there's just, there's just nobody up in this area during the winter like that. Uh, and something I didn't uh, actually mention uh, back here at the wrong road. When they took this wrong road, there was a gate that should have went across the road, but vandals had broken into the gate and locked it open so they didn't even see the gate. So had that not happened, they would not have went down that road. But that gate had been had been the lock had been cut and all the rest and that was really the terrible tragedy that sent them down that wrong road so anyway now they are stuck down here and it was six or seven days i believe i decided he had to leave the car and go get help to save his family now he wasn't familiar with this area he didn't know you know anything about it but he left the car and ultimately two days later his body was discovered here in this ravine uh, but before that uh, well I don't know if it was before he got to this location or not a helicopter had flown over because they were searching for him at that time and had seen the car and they were able to get another helicopter to come and land and pick up uh, James Kim's wife and two daughters. So then the search was on for him. So he somehow made it clear across this area. This is some, I don't know how many miles, but a fair amount in the snow wearing, you know, just regular clothes and tennis shoes. And, everything and then he ended up down in this ravine and ultimately succumbed to hypothermia so as you can see there's just there's just no no place around here where people would be this black bear lodge is only open during the summer and it's just a really really sad situation so that's where it took place at here on Google Earth. So now we'll go get the Cessna from KMFR and we'll fly up here and try to fly to all these locations. I don't know. It's I don't know if I'm going to be able to see much, but um, we'll just try to get a, a look at what all this stuff looks like from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020.